Rev up your engines. Now the first thing you have to understand about electrical gremlins in a car is electricity has to flow smoothly. So anything that stops that flow of electrons can cause problems. You got what's called a 12 volt battery system. It's actually a little bit more than 12 volts, but we'll just say 12 volts. The electricity has to flow smoothly. If there are dirty connectors, corroded connectors, that slows the flow down, those areas often will get hot. <laughs> now this is a perfect prime infrared sensing device. It's cool. It lets you see heat. This battery terminal is blue. It's cool, but aha, this one's red. That means that connection has a problem. It's getting too hot. In this case, it's just dirty. Battery terminals get battery acid, it corrodes them, and when it corrodes them, then it makes more resistance, so it builds up heat, especially when you start the car. Normally, that's a simple fix, hey. <laughs> get one of these battery terminal cleaners, you take the battery terminal off, clean it inside, and then use this funky end in here that has little brushes to clean the top of the terminal on the battery, then put it all back together again. And you might think, hey, that's just the ground terminal. Well, on a car, you got to have power, but you also have ground because the electricity flows. If your ground is bad, it is just as bad as if you have a problem in a power wire. Now, my little infrared sensor, hey, that's cool for finding stuff really fast. But of course, <laughs> if you don't want to buy some expensive toy like that, you use your bare hands, of course, you can feel the wires. And if one wire is just normal and the other one's really hot, Start following that wire to where it either bolts onto stuff or has a little snap-on connection. And if you take those connectors apart and they're green inside, that's corrosion. And you need to clean that off really well. You use spray electrical cleaner. In this case, it's a mass airflow sensor cleaner. It's a very good electrical cleaner. Now the next electrical gremlins that can knock out your car are electrical relays. These are called relays. And they're basically safety devices and in modern cars, they're all over the place because computers control a lot of the electronics these days. A computer has very little power. They work on a five volt reference and a few milliamps of power, not all that much power. So you can't have a computer say, turn on your air conditioner, operate an ignition system, there's too much power. So they send a little bit of voltage to these relays. And the relays, which can either be electromagnetic where there's an electromagnet, like an old fashioned doorbell ringer, or they're completely transistorized and they're computerized inside. They take that little bit of voltage that comes from the computer, close down the relay, and allow full power from the battery that's in one of the terminals to then flow to whatever device that relay powers. There's only a certain amount of different relays that are in there. So let's say one device doesn't work. Maybe it's got the same relay as one of the other ones. And in that case, you can just unplug the relay from the other device and plug it into the one that you think is bad. And if it starts working great, just go buy that one relay and plug it in. Because it can get a lot more complicated with computers and electronics. You want to pray that a relay has gone bad if something's not working, like many cars have a fuel pump relay. Hey, if your fuel pump stops working, of course check the fuse. But more often, it's the relay's gone bad. It's a lot easier plugging one of these relays in than it is dropping your gas tank and putting a new fuel pump in, only to find out later it was just the relay and not that expensive fuel pump. Now, since you can't see electricity, it's a good idea to have some kind of device that can check for electricity. This is a power probe. I've used them for years and I love them because look, here's the lead. <laughs> it's tremendously long. So you can go anywhere on the car once you hook it up to the battery and test stuff without having to keep looking for a place you can get power from because your tool won't reach the back of the car or under the hood. Not just simple stuff like testing fuses. You just put it on one end of the fuse or the other. When you're checking a fuse, put it on one side. Push it hard, that's got power. Then try the other side. That's got power. If it would have had power on one side but then green ground on the other side, that means the fuse was blown. Here we go testing the battery itself. And it's 12.3. You want a tool that has the voltage readout because if you lose too much voltage, things won't work right. Even though 
this would show there's power and a red light would come on. Let's say one is 12.3 volts and the other is 11.5 volts. That would mean that there's a problem in whatever device only has 11.5 volts. There's too much loss. Using a simple device like this, you can find which circuits have a problem and then you can trace them through. If it's inside the body of the car, yeah, you're gonna have to go through all that <laughs> if you don't have the fancy tools. But this can find an awful lot for a simple basic tool that anyone can understand. Now the last gremlin I'm gonna talk about that can knock out your car are bad grounds on the wiring system. A big cost in older cars and of course, anybody who knows GM, GMs have a history of bad grounding problems in all their cars throughout history, and especially the modern ones that have more grounds than the older ones did. There are grounds all over the place. Here's the lighting ground for this Toyota, and as you can see, I've been a bad boy. This one's getting kind of rusty. I should take it off, clean it all down to bare metal, and then bolt it back on. Bad ground circuits can cause the strangest things in cars. If you get a bad ground circuit, sometimes the car will start using power circuits to try to ground things. And all kinds of weird things will go on. I've seen them where all of a sudden the horns will start beeping on their own. The radio will start changing channels on its own. Your backup lights work, and when you turn the car off, they're still on. <laughs> now it's a good thing that electricity works logically. But the truth behind the logic on any given car can get to be pretty squirrely, especially in cars that have been in any type of accident. I had a customer the other day. My headlights are dim on the passenger side. Check it out. I said to her, okay, first thing, did you buy this car new or used? And she said she bought it brand new, which was great because that meant she knew the entire history of the car. So my next question was, have you been in any wrecks? And her answer to that was, yeah. I had to have the front fender and the front bumper and the headlamp assembly replaced. So right away I thought, aha. So I went right to that right side and unfortunately on this car, in order to get to all the wiring on the headlamps, I had to take the stupid front bumper off. <laughs> I took the front bumper off and lo and behold, knuckleheads at the body shop hadn't put the ground for that whole giant headlight assembly on good. It was loose in the course under there. The water splashes in from the right front tire when it's raining and it just got corroded. All I had to do was take it apart, clean the grounds and put it back together again. Think about problem areas. Has a car been wrecked in that area? Perhaps part of the car got underwater. If it was parked somewhere where maybe the back was lower than the front and the back got flooded. You always want to check those areas first because corrosion is the number one enemy to body grounds in cars. If a car has something that's been modified, maybe the wiring's been messed with, maybe some device was added, always check in that area first. Here's an example. It's an extreme one, but I see it quite often when guys mess with their cars. I had a customer and he put all these fancy LED lights so it could sparkle and play with music when he drove down the road. When he was putting all the wiring for all those LED lights, he was drilling little holes, then he'd bolt the wiring harness in one section, go to the next one, drill a little hole, bolt that in, and guess what happened? When he was drilling one of those holes, he also drilled through the power supply to the fuel pump. It nicked the wire. And somehow when he bolted the little screw in that held the wiring harness in, it didn't short it out just yet. Driving around, especially a little Honda Civic, everything bounced around eventually. That screw connected the body of the car to the power to the fuel pump and poof! I get it all the time. People put a fancy entertainment system in their dash. Sometimes the car won't start after that or Many devices don't work. I know, they did something in there. And I gotta pull that radio system out and start checking through and praying that they didn't cause any kind of a cross short to ruin any of those computer modules like the body control module, because those things are expensive. That's why my number one tip for people who are working on their own car, if you're working on electronic stuff, disconnect your car battery. Then there's no power flowing through the system and you're not gonna fry a computer if you accidentally put power and ground together somewhere. Now you know a bit more about electrical gremlins on your car and what you can do to either prevent or fix them when they show up. So if you never wanna miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.